Alright, if you're not in, there is your ad code. Get in, get in, get in, people.
two zero <coughs> two. Bless 
coming up that they specifically make laws about. So read through it, write a little reflection, one for each person. If there's two people, if you're doing this together, put your little name at the beginning of your reflection. One to two sentences. What stands out for what Congress can make laws for? Oh, you said you You shared a mission. You made a one. It's only up to two people. Remember that. Like you and a partner, Tops. Or just you. People, you're working on the reflection that says task three. Oh, you guys are in the wrong spot. What? Just
as far as what laws Congress can make. Catherine's my first victim. Uh, Catherine, what do you got? Um, Nice. They're in charge of or have jurisdiction over foreign matters, right? Anything that's like the whole United States having to do with other countries, that's their power, right? That's part of the federal government's power. Love it. That's a good one. I know you just came in today, but what do you got? What do you notice after reading all those little translations? Yeah, absolutely. They're the ones that create the military. And that's important. Do we want, like, California to have its own army? Would that be good? What if like California has an army and Texas has an army and they like don't like each other? <laughs> we have the biggest conflict. We could take over the. the do, you, do we want that? Do we want states to have their own armies, or do we want one army for the whole country? One army for the whole country. Yeah, that's a better way to go. Right? Otherwise, you end up with some war. It's usually not a good thing. All right, one more, one more. Chris, what do you got? What do you notice about the laws that you make? Oh, okay. Alex, what do you got? Okay, so anything that has to do with money, that's the commerce clause, that's really important, and then anything with the military, right? The military and money, both very, very important. Nice. All right, people. So let's get clear about something. Express versus implied powers. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the differences. You're going to take notes on the examples, okay? So you have a little note section about express, note section about implied power. So your job is to write down a couple examples. I'm going to run through like four slides to give examples of each, okay? So an express or an enumerated power is a power straight up written into the Constitution that gives Congress that power. If it explicitly states it, it is express or enumerated. An example is the power to create a military and collect taxes. Straight up says that in the Constitution, okay? Implied powers are powers not written into the Constitution, but they are implied, right? It means that they have to be able to do that to do their express powers. So an example of that is it's expressed for them to be in control of the military, but it's implied then that they can create a draft, okay? So here are some examples. To lay and collect taxes. Having the power to lay and collect taxes, it is implied that they can punish people that don't pay their taxes, okay? Congress has the express power that it is the only body in the federal government to decide how to tax us. So the president can't say, we're gonna tax you guys extra. It is only for Congress to have that power, okay? But it is implied that they can regulate certain things like alcohol, outlaw, other things require states to meet certain conditions to get federal funding. Those are implied powers. So the ability to lay and collect taxes is expressed. These powers are implied. All right. Power to regulate interstate commerce. So it is straight up expressed to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with Indian tribes. It straight up says that in the Constitution. They can make laws regulating domestic and foreign trade. They cannot favor one state over another. Those are all straight up stated in the Constitution. It is implied then that they can establish a minimum wage. The second you got money involved, it is implied that they can regulate it. So they create things like minimum wage, ban discrimination in the workplace, pass laws protecting the disabled, and regulate banking. Those are all implied powers. You don't got to write down all of them. You just need a couple examples of express, a couple examples of implied. All right, here's another one. The power to raise an army and navy. Straight up says it, right? Congress alone has the power to raise and support an army and navy. They make rules governing our military, and it straight up says they have the power to declare war. It is implied, then, that they have the power to draft Americans into the military, okay? This is controversial, right? There's a lot of people that think the draft is just straight up wrong. But Supreme Court in 1917 
because the United States created a draft to fight for World War One, upheld Congress's power to create a draft. All right, people, one more. Power to create naturalization laws. Those are laws surrounding immigration, right? So Congress sets up the process for immigrants becoming citizens. It also implies then that they have the power to regulate and limit immigration, right? Quotas are placed on the number of people that can immigrate here every year. Those are implied powers based on the express power that they have the right to establish laws or rules about naturalization. This is a hot topic right now. Just so you guys know, they finally solidify our two nominees for president in November. It's going to be Joe Biden and Donald Trump again. So Trump, so Trump, so Trump, so Trump. Gentlemen, gentlemen. There are not, but you are welcome to go get a box of our next In fact, I would appreciate it. Thanks. All right, people. So I want you to just give me a show of hands. If you're understanding the difference between express and implied, give me a thumbs up. If it's not making sense, give me a thumbs down. I need everybody to give me either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You either get it or you don't. Dylan, you get it? There we go. Thank you. Frank, you get it? Okay, we look pretty good. Sweet. All right, people, let's, let's, let's practice. Let's see if you get it. Talk to your table. If Congress is regulating exhaust noise from cars, would that be an implied or an express power? Talk to your table. I'm going to call on some folks to make sure we get it. Congress is regulating exhaust noise from cars. Would that be implied or express? Why? <coughs>
Unless you all have partners, talk to each other. And if you're working solo, that's okay. This is crazy. Can any help? Okay, which part? Uh, implied powers. Ooh, okay, so here, go right here. So, let's scroll down. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, so all these slides are examples, right? So this is expressed. Any of those could go on that column, and then all of the ones under implied are implied. So you can use any of those as examples. All right, thank you. You're welcome. How are we doing, Questions? Okay, so then one clause, so they'll figure out where it says anything about taxes at the bottom. Looks like you were doing exactly what you were doing.
have about seven sections, or excuse me, seven minutes left for that section. Did you get a very finished graph for it? Yeah. Can you scroll up? Using 
the necessary and proper clause, which is clause 18, okay? You guys good on that? That's the cheat code for the government people. That's how they get their fingers into anything that they would like to. All right, Two more minutes. What's up? Question. Uh, it is implied because. So this one? Oh, this one. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in the section. So implied. They're all right. They're all right. This one. 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 Who did that one? Come on, come on. Oh, okay. You gotta pick one of the clauses at the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a different reflection for each student, so choose different laws, please. And if you want to research a different law from those three, you can. Which law?
Good morning, Matador. Excuse the interruption. We'd like to announce our 2024 salutatorians, Adrian Pineda and Sky Bui, and our valedictorians for the class of 2024 is Philip Nguyen. Congratulations to all of them. Give them a big round of applause when you see them. Thank you. Who's Philip Nguyen? Some smart dude. Some smart dude. It's like you got an obvious. I'm going to do the valedictorian. Are you dumb? All right, kiddos, you're out of here in about six minutes. Seven 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 minutes.
to improve your, your scores. Uh, maybe you're doing a bench press max. Maybe you're able to do 150 pounds this time. Next time I want to do 160 pounds. So those are specific goals you have in mind for your fitness to improve. Okay, because you're always trying to get better when you're doing fitness. Now, the FIT principle, remember that just stands for frequency, intensity, time, and type, so you can just restate that. All right, so let's get into the details of each of these. Um, if you're going to pick one exercise to do over your life, probably the best one for overall health is cardio. Cardio is just where you pick a repeated exercise, you do it, get your heart rate up, your heart rate pumping, and something like that. You know, that's going to give you the most health benefits. I mean, besides that, it's also good to do some resistance exercise. But if you're going to just pick one, cardio is probably the best overall health. So let's talk about uh, the, the requirements for cardio. So for cardio, we want to do a minimum three days a week. Uh, so three days a week to start, like let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, when you build up, you can do it up to five days a week. So three to five days a week would be how often you're going to do cardio. Uh, intensity, that means how um, you measure your heart rate for cardio intensity, 65 to 95%. So we'll talk about a little table you can um, There's a chart, you can look at your heart rate intensity. And so what you want to do is get your heart beating at that rate for that amount of time. So as far as time goes, you want to do with the minimum 20 minutes at a time, build up 30 or more. So 20 to 30 minutes, that three days a week for your cardio activity. And then what is cardio? It's a rhythmic, continuous activity in 20 more minutes. So walking fast, jogging, riding your bike, swimming, uh, anything to get your heart rate up for a period of time, that's cardio, okay? So when you guys jog and walk from the track for a PE, you're doing cardio, right? When you did your push-ups and sit-ups, you're doing muscle so those are the different uh, categories. So once again, you want to follow the guidelines at least three days a week, at a minimum 20 minutes at a time to start building, and then you can increase it as you go. So cardio is something that, you know, if you can incorporate in your life, it's going to give you benefits. We talked about all the benefits. Now, along with cardio, you have to be aware of this target heart rate range. Now, to train cardio, you want to train in a certain heart rate range. And what is a heart rate range? Well, heart rate depends on your age down the bottom here, and your heart rate beats per minute. So what does that mean? That means that when you're training, you want to train in uh, a specific zone. So let's go through the zones. There's four of them. Warm up, fat burning, hard cardiac zone, and aerobic. So when you first start off, and we're going to assume you know, all you guys are in 20, you can use the 20 year old one there. Uh, when you first start off working out, you're going to do something slow just to get your body warmed up. So if you're, if you're jogging, you can walk or whatever, just to get your body warmed up. Um, there is this fat burning zone, and it's a lower intensity zone, usually used for a longer period of time. So people who use slow exercise for a long period of time, um, instead of burning sugar as much, they, they cut into the fat, bit, but it's a longer duration, it's a slower intensity. But what we're really talking about here is um, to improve your cardio, is to train in the target heart rate zone. So the target heart rate zone is where they want you to train to improve it. So for you guys, um, you look, it's about 130 to about 170. Now, how do you take your heart rate? Well, you can take it on a machine. If you're working out on a machine, you have sensors. You can use a watch or a heart rate monitor. But really easy, you can just count the number of beats on your wrist. Uh, you can feel it over here, your heart rate and pulse, or you can go to your neck and count it. If you count how many beats you have in 10, second, uh, 10 seconds, you multiply it times six, that's your heart rate. So for target heart rate, um, i give you an idea of if you're in the target heart rate zone, usually you're breathing pretty good, your heart rate's going, you might be sweating, you're probably in the target heart rate zone. Okay, if you're, if you're not really doing that, you're probably below that. So the thing is you want to train in that zone to improve your cardio at least three days a week, 20 minutes out of 20 to 30 minutes out of time. Okay? Now there's this other zone called the anaerobic or high intensity zone, and it's about 170 to 200. And you get to that zone when you're doing higher intensity stuff. So let's say you're doing sprints, right? Or you're doing like anything from about 10, 10 seconds to about two minutes. Um, and you're getting your heart rate up really high, and then usually you're taking rests or breaks. So if you're doing like sprints or stadiums or something, you're gonna do a sprint, and then you're gonna rest, so there's rest intervals. So high intensity is really good to build anaerobic capacity. A lot of sports do that, because they use a lot of sprints in their activity. And also anaerobic is, anaerobics is a real a high intensity, so it can improve your cardio as well. So in general, um, you know, you wanna be training your target heart rate zone. That's listed in the purple. Um, you can do uh, fat burning zone, but that's longer. So target heart rate zone is what we're looking at for cardio, okay? So just anything that gets you out there, your heart rate up, you're breathing, you're sweating, for 20 or 30 minutes at a time, it's going to be cardio, okay? That's what we're pointing 
Uh, and then they mentioned that uh, incorporating cardio into your life, so maybe you can uh, do things like walk to the store or ride your bike or walk or ride your bike to school if you're close enough, right? Um, to save you money, to save you time, get out to get exercise, reduce pollution, like not riding. So if you have the ability to walk or ride your bike to school and you're somewhat close and you're not too far away, maybe you can make that choice and that can help you get your exercise. You know, a lot of people get your exercise. But you know, it's up to you. Uh, but once again, or try to like uh, walk or ride your bike over to the store and be close to one instead of taking your car. Okay? Maybe food. Um, so get outside and get more activity in the game. Go to the parks. It's just great with uh, everybody's out getting activity when they're Pokemon food. They don't think it's a good enough to go. Everybody's out getting some Pokemon. So they're off walking around. That was a great exercise. So um, you saw a lot of people on doors. So once again, uh, something like that where you can get outside and just get some exercise is great. Maybe go play a sport, an activity that you can play with your friends, if you're into basketball, football, soccer, whatever you want to play, just get your heart rate. Okay. So as far as requirements for cardio, I remember it was three, three to five days a week, uh, 65 to 85% intensity. You want to go for 20 to 30 minutes at a time, and you want to take an exercise to get your heart, heart rate up at that period of time. So walking and jogging. Uh, how can you incorporate it into your life? So what kind of activities can you take for yourself? You're going to do this on your side of the so. okay. All right, so the next category is strength. Uh, we should be here in the middle here in a second. Okay, so as soon as that rings, we'll head out. <coughs> uh, so, so muscle strength and endurance are kind of related to them. It's just you're, you're doing resistance training, right? You're doing body weight exercises or weights to increase your strength and endurance. So here we go. This is an emergency. Please evacuate your classrooms and all areas of the campus to your de designated areas. Again, this is an evacuation. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead and uh, move yourself in here, guys. We're going to head out. Okay, so head out. Go to the left and then to the part of the left. It's out on the left side. So everybody head out, please. We'll come back so you can move yourself. It's only about a few minutes, guys. We're evacuating after, you know, emergency evacuation. Oh, here, can you grab this? Take this out. Okay.
job. That's what you're going to do. Just gonna... So it happens. You want to figure out the spot. It'll be different in every class, of course. So good job on that. All right. All right, let's continue. Uh, let's get through this. So muscle strength, uh, you want to do uh, two or three days a week. Um, multiple sets of reps for different exercises. Try to the muscle group. So, whether you do your body weight or go to the gym or something like that, um, you know, training uh, muscle groups at least two or three days a week is recommended for muscle strength and endurance. So, uh, the frequency, uh, multiple exercises, so you just want to pick large muscle groups to train. Uh, usually exercises like push-pull, like push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, things like that. Um, eight to 10 exercises two to three days a week. Intensity is based on your one rep max. You want to do uh, more than 60%. So something heavy enough for where you're going to get some benefit from it. Now, if you're going to go, uh, if you go heavier, less reps, you're going to train more of a strength component. If you do more reps, you're doing like multiple sets of reps, or you're doing like one minute of sit-ups or push-ups, you're training more endurance. So muscle endurance is more reps, strength is less reps. So you're going to use more resistance or more weight with that. Um, so once again, uh, higher, higher sets of reps is endurance, less sets of reps, and more weight is strength. So when you exercise these, usually you do the, you do a set, you lift, and then you take a break because it's an anaerobic exercise. But what you can do with these, and you might have done this in the uh, weight training classes, you do what's called a circuit. So like you have machines, you can go from one thing to the next, train different muscle groups, and just do it all in a row to save time. So I, that's a really effective uh, routine. So a lot of gyms have these circuits. And you don't really need to rest periods so your heart rate stays up, so you're actually doing cardio as well. Um, the list of exercises here, um, just some ideas. You know, you don't need weights to do uh, strength training. You can do body weight exercises, stuff like push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, leg raises, uh, body weight squats, that kind of stuff. Once again, you can just, uh, I'm not going to get into details, you can look up um, body weight programs on YouTube and just you know, follow those from basics to advanced. There are different body weight exercise routines. Um, and then if you have access to weights like free weights and machines, um, you know, usually you have to walk with the gym that unless you have your own stuff at home. Um, free weights are barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells. They're, they're weights that are not going to go to a machine. Um, generally, it's free <coughs> exercises, especially for people involved in athletics and stuff like that. It's usually more recommended to do that. But, you know, body rolls and stuff is free weights as well. Um, and then there's machines, of course. Uh, most of the time you have to go to the gym. That's supposed to be expensive. Usually there's multiple machines to cover different exercise groups. Um, you're going to go and you know, do multiple sets of reps with your machine, or you can do like a circuit, like I said. Um, with the machines, they usually isolate muscle groups, or they do uh, things like that. Um, with any of these, I would recommend, especially if you're going to be using weights, is to, if you go use them, either have somebody show you how to use them, or make sure that you go to a you know, get a trainer at the gym or somebody who's, who can show you at least the basics of each exercise and how to do it. Because there's always people who are like making a lot of mistakes and not doing proper form and get injured doing that. So if you're going to use uh, weights, I would recommend having someone who is trained on how to do that before you start doing those exercises. Okay? So uh, there are lots of examples, um, but once again, it's probably best to consult with somebody before you start doing weight training. Um, or give us somebody who knows what they're doing. <coughs> You have like a friend who's really you know, has a lot of experience, then they can maybe help you out when you work out. But once again, with this and anything else, you want to start really light and just keep into it. That way you don't get too sore, hurt yourself, and then you can kind of build up until you can increase. Okay, but weights are really good. I mean, besides cardio, weights are really good just for your muscle function and structure and reactivity. So as far as the requirements of strength, um, remember it's uh, two to three days a week, 60% uh, or above. The more, the more reps you're doing, the more of endurance you're doing heavy weight that's for strength. Uh, two or three sets per exercise. Um, you can increase it, but uh, some people do multiple sets. Some people split up their workouts, like when you're bodybuilding and stuff, they might be body parts in different days. But a lot of athletes usually just do that functionality. Um, but if you're just doing it for fitness, and something like a circuit or whatever is just great. All right, last thing is flexibility. Besides uh, cardio and strength, you want to work on maybe improving your flexibility. This is something you want to do when you warm it up. It's a good idea to get into your workout. Um, <coughs> so let's go to that. Once again, it's just like, it's kind of like weights. You're going to do two to three days a week. Um, if you can do it every day, that's better. 
you're going to hold static stretching position. So this is just a stretching, right? Where you're going to do um, major body parts, stretch those muscles for 10 to 30 seconds to a point of tension, uh, two or three times um, per set. Uh, that and do it a couple times a week. Uh, more often is better. So you can actually do this every day if you want to really bring up flexibility. So major muscle groups, do it when you're um, warm. Static is improved. Static is where you hold the stretch. There's something called dynamic where you're stretching through a range of motion while you're moving. Uh, also certain weight exercises, especially free weight, train uh, range of motion flexibility as well. So they give you an idea of some stretches here, you know, maybe you've done stretches in a PE class or something. Um, try to do them when you're warmed up, either when you've done some exercise or at the end of your workout. Uh, this can incorporate into, let's say you go to a gym three days a week, you can do um, cardio, you can do weights, you can do stretching all on the same day, right? So here's some examples of different exercises. I'm not going to get into a routine for you. You can go Google or look up on YouTube uh, flexibility, basic flexibility routines, and copy what they're doing, right? But once again, it's a good idea to get somebody to kind of show you the exercises before you stretch. Um, you know, it just helps general muscle tone, um, helps uh, performance, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you know the fit requirements. Again, it's two to three days a week. You want to hold the stretch for 10 to 30 seconds. You have multiple stretches, multiple groups. So for each of these, you're going to do just know the, the, the guidelines of the fit requirements. They're basically all summarized right here on this slide. Good. All right, so that finishes off the chapter. Um, Done, and we're going to pretty much finish up a review for the test next week. Uh, we do have one more assignment I want to show you. Uh, this is just kind of the overall fitness stuff. Uh, first off, the question here is what's, what's the definition for fitness? What does it mean to you? You can answer that. Do a couple of sentences there. Uh, this one right here um, what are the health benefits of lifelong fitness? So I want you to list five, but don't, don't just list them, also describe what the benefits are. So you're going to say better heart health. How does it help your heart, right? Better um, diabetes and weight control, uh, increase uh, better for mental health, right? Describe what that is. Don't just listen, but describe what it is for those five. Uh, using this table here, the one in your notes, I want you to summarize uh, the basically the activities in this table down here. So you're going to just restate this here just to get an idea of the fit requirements for each of these. So cardio, muscle, and flexibility. Uh, down here, I showed you the target heart rate zone. Um, once again, you're going to assume you're 20 for some of these questions, but asking questions like, what's the target purple zone? Assume you're 20 years old, so you're going to interpret the graph here. What's the green zone if you're 40 years old with fat burning? So look at the heart rate range there. And then finally, um, what is the red zone if you're 25 years old? So you're going to look at age down here, and then um, look at the zone and the heart rate that corresponding to that. So um, how do you interpret the graph so you know where you should be training, right? Uh, and then finally, the last one is we're going to develop your own exercise plan. Uh, on this one, I want you to pick specific exercises that you do for cardio, um, for weight training or muscle training, and for stretching. So right here, you list like, okay, what are you going to do? You're going to run, you're going to sport, you're going to swim. Um, what heart rate range do you train in? For you guys, it's under 20, right? So you're going to pick one of this. And then how many days a week? So just come up with an example of something you can do basically to, with improving fitness. So for muscle fitness, what, what would you do? Would you do body weight exercises? Would you do um, machines? Would you do free weights? How are you going to train strength training? What, how many sets of reps of each exercise are you going to do? And then how many times a week? And finally, same thing for flexibility. List some stretches you can do. Right, you can look those up. How many sets of reps are you going to do? And how many times per week? So once again, this is just a uh, using the, the guidelines that I gave you. You guys are going to just kind of come up with your own routine. Um, kind of, you know, three days a week is fine, if you want to list five, whatever, but just list specific exercises, sets, and reps you're going to do, and this would be a good start for you to uh, get on the program. Now, if you're not one right now, once again, you can just do something out on your own, um, out, out in the open, uh, park, or whatever. Um, if you want to get uh, more, access some more stuff, then perhaps consider joining a gym or something, and then working out there, because a lot of people do. Um, Yeah. Uh -huh.
I've got the questions to finish, and then some of you uh, still need to turn in the Michael as well. There are eight people that didn't turn that in, so check your out. Uh, make sure you turn that in, okay? So get those done, and then we'll uh, move ahead uh, with the test next week.
Reyes. No, I was um, blowing my nose. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Christopher, go ahead. Christopher, Christopher back here. Matthew, here. And Stephen.
to start off.
Thank <laughs> you. 
That's about right. Yeah. Also, you want me to stick to the code? Right? Yeah, just stick to the code. Right? Just, just use it. Can you add up? Yeah, I, no, I can't add up. So I can't add up. Five times two times. Sorry. Just tell us, man. Just take it. Take it. Ah, let me swap it. Let me swap it. Let me Let me swap it. Thank you for cleaning up, okay. putting the gas down. Yeah.